so there we go. <laughs> All right, hi everyone. Um, I'm Sarah Jacobson. I'm a PhD candidate at the City University of New York's Graduate Center. And I'll just start out talking about uh, the landscape that we're, we're working on. Uh, so we're studying a population of about 250 to 300 elephants living in the Salakpra Wildlife Sanctuary, uh, which you can see here is in Western Thailand. And we, uh, this is a protected area, so the public are not allowed into the sanctuary, uh, but very small amount of the border is fenced, so the elephants are frequently coming out of the sanctuary into neighboring agricultural areas. And the farmers in the area are using a number of different deterrents, um, electric fencing, some firecrackers and light to chase elephants out, uh, but the, this hasn't been overall very successful. So we're studying this population using mainly video camera traps uh, to get at the behavioral perspective of these elephants. And so we've set up a number of uh, video camera traps both inside the sanctuary around watering holes, like you can see here, and then outside the sanctuary or on the borders around these crop fields. And we've set these up across these four colored sites on this map. So. Um, this can provide us a lot of behavioral data, like social associations between elephants, but we can also do some comparisons between individuals that are spending a lot of time in these central areas of the sanctuary and those that are spending time on the outer areas of the sanctuary. And so not only behavioral data, but also experimental data can be collected from these camera traps. And I will go into a, a few field experiments that we've been working on um, that are across all of these sites. So I'll start out talking about innovation. We're trying to look at um, elephant innovation using a puzzle box. So this puzzle box has three different types of doors, a push door, a pull door, and a slide door. And we're interested in how innovative an individual is or how many doors they're able to open. So you can see some preliminary data here on the right side um, with innovation score on the x-axis and number of elephants on the y. But the, you're, we're already seeing quite a bit of variation in the number of doors here that these elephants are able to open from this puzzle box. And some very, again, preliminary um, data, we don't have as much of uh, analyzed yet for the elephants near the crop fields, but we may also start to see even more variation between areas as well. The second uh, study, we're looking at the personality trait of neophilia, or attraction to novelty using novel object tests. So how individuals are differing in how they're exploring this novel object, like this cattle brush that's in their environment, and maybe how that can tell us more about how they explore human environments, which are full of novel things. Lastly, we're looking at the personality trait of boldness, um, so how an elephant reacts to a predator call, including that of humans. And this is being um, led by another PhD student in the lab, Robbie Ball, and he's worked to install these camera trap activated um, predator playbacks so that we can um, detect an elephant and then record their response to the playback. So you can see this elephant um, has just heard it and he's actually listening with his um, leg up like that. Um, so this is just starting, but we're gonna again look across these landscapes for, for this personality trait as well. And so we're not only interested in the variation in individuals um, in their cognitive abilities or their personality traits, but also how this can relate to conflict mitigation. So um, potentially you can actually cater certain strategies to certain types of elephants by creating personality profiles that would look something like what you can see here. So based on um, getting this elephant's participation in a number of experiments, not only do we have some morphological information about that individual, but we also know that he is highly innovative and maybe not very bold. So uh, the same elephant, as you can see in this video, approaching an electric fence here. Um, electric fencing isn't working very well for a more innovative elephant. But if we know that this individual is also not very bold, perhaps um, a predator playback or some other type of um, threatening sound would be more effective deterrent. And ultimately, we want to implement these profiles for improved coexistence by working with the local people to schedule deterrence. And the scheduling would be based on the predominant personality type of elephants that we see in a certain area. 
Um, but it would also incorporate cognitive concepts such as habituation, so potentially rotating through different deterrents um, because we know more about how long it takes elephants to habituate to a certain type. And um, yeah, ultimately we want that, we would hope that a concise battery of this type of experimentation could be applied to other crop breeding populations in order to better inform their deterrence um, in Thailand and other parts of Thailand and then beyond. So I want to thank um, all of our research staff and the rangers that we work with and the communities we work with as well as everyone in the Comparative Cognition for Conservation Lab and our funders. And I'll take any questions. So. Thank you, Sarah. Um, just a, wondering what the effects would be to other wildlife with these predator playback calls. Is there any thought on that? Maybe changing daily activity patterns or upsetting any other wildlife that may be beneficial to the area? Yeah, I think um, we haven't totally thought through that as an actual deterrent, but that would certainly be in the areas where um, there are crop areas. And so, I think it would, it's very important to consider, and I think that should be part of our evaluation of if once we get to that point where if we're actually using those as deterrents rather than just at this point um, assessing the personality of the elephants. So, yeah. Hi, thanks for the presentation. Um, I'm just interested in the puzzle boxes and what you're using to attract the elephants and whether that will actually impact how they're then attracted to certain crops or items in human habituation or settlements? Yeah, great question. Um, so we're, in our puzzle boxes, we're using jackfruit because uh, it was known to be something very um, attractive to elephants when people, like the rangers, brought it into the area, but there aren't that many jackfruit plantations in the landscape. Um, and we also really, you know, the amount of jackfruit, which is like this much <laughs> that an elephant is getting from um, actually solving the puzzle box, we didn't think that that would make a difference in how they actually, you know, would think about a much larger source. Um, I do think it's something that's important to consider and you wouldn't want, you know, to be putting sugarcane right next to a sugarcane plantation. Um, but elephants also eat so much that the amount of food may not uh, be important to them, that amount, smaller amount of food. Do we have time for another? So the study is on individuality and individual personal personality, and when this turns into translates into management interventions, I mean immediate management interventions, it's often uh, translates into driving out herds of elephants, and uh, and in the night, in the darkness, and you do it. So how do you think that uh, knowing individuals can help, you know, driving herds of 50, 60, or 70 elephants in? Yeah, I definitely think it depends on the landscape. So at least in our landscape, we're seeing a consistent, uh, consistent individuals that are in one area. Um, so I, uh, yeah, it may not apply to areas where there's a large herd, um, but if you, and I think it's probably going to be more so based on the predominant type of personality that you see in that in that group. So if you're seeing um, within that herd, maybe they're, the majority that you have data from are have one trait, then you can really cater it to like the most effective for the most individuals. So I think on a like in that in the moment sort of individual um, information may only be helpful as far as how aggressive an individual might be towards someone who's driving them out potentially, but um, that that you're just putting the most resources into the solutions that are catered to that majority. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, thanks.